Hello everybody, good afternoon and welcome to the start of what is going to be an absolutely super Saturday in the Premier League. We're kicking off with Crystal Palace against Liverpool. Um, that's going to be the first watch along, you're very welcome. Hopefully you're going to join us for all of them. I'm going to be on the United stand at 3 o'clock for Manchester United and Bournemouth and then back on here at half past five for Aston Villa against Arsenal. What a day we have in store for you. It's going to be fantastic. Hopefully the action on the pitch delivers because I tell you what, it's very exciting when you look at that league table at the moment. Liverpool with the opportunity to go top before Arsenal play Aston Villa tonight. Massive, massive games coming in here. Is Roy Hodgson under pressure? Is Goldbridge under pressure? I've, 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 maybe, I've maybe put myself up for Pratt of the Week. If you listen to the Goldbridge Bod uh, Saves Football podcast out every Tuesday and Friday, we have Pratt of the Week on Tuesday. And we've had, you know, glorious, uh, consistent contenders for Pratt of the Week, like uh, Mar um, Anthony Taylor, Michael Owen, Howard Webb, uh, Jamie Canagher, Gabby Bonglehor. Well, Goldbridge will be number one Pratt of the Week if this goes wrong. You won't believe it. I can't speak. Basically, I've benched Saka in FPL. Fancy Premier League, I've benched Saka. Clip it up, keep it for later. I've benched Saka on Fancy Premier League. And I'll tell you why, I've, I can tell you now. Basically, my midfield five, and I can only pick four of them, is Saka, Son, Salah, Huang Hee Chan, Ganacho. It's a decent five, and I can only pick four. And I thought Huang Hee Chan at home to Forest, goals. Son at home to Newcastle, goals. Salah away to Palace, goals. So it was Ganacho or Saka. And I thought Villa are playing really well at the moment and Bournemouth are at home to Man United. So I've gone Ganacho over Saka. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on that? First poll of the day. Should I, you know, either or, either or in FPL, which way are we going? Saka or Ganacho, and don't don't do it about ability. Do it about I think I've either, I'm, I'm either incredibly thick or I'm or I'm, or I'm a genius. Uh, one of those two things. Uh, anyway, um, people might be saying, why are you wearing your Ganacho ho ho Christmas jumper? Because this is that's football. Everybody is welcome on here. It was a Christmas cracker, and it has won Premier League goal of the month. So that's why I'm wearing it. I can wear it on here. And I don't have to change for the United Stand at three o'clock. So uh, there you go. If you want to get one of these bad boys or girls, we do, it would fit a girl as well. Um, then the link's in the live chat, United Stand, Shopify, check it out. Check it out. Uh, okay. Um, I've picked Anana Jackson and Mika Richards to score today. Anana Jackson and Mika Richards. I don't know what that even means, Alex. I, I actually thought you were talking sense at the start there. Anyway, let's come back to what we know. Take everything real slow. We've got Alice. What? What? Alison starting. I've put Keller here in goal. I can't believe it. I've put Keller here in goal. I bought Keller here in on purpose for this game. Oh, well. Are Arioli, you it. You're back in. Um, don't matter. It doesn't matter with the goalkeeper, really, does it? Anyway, let's go through the teams for you. Crystal Palace, obviously, at home here. On a really bad run at the moment, Crystal Palace. There can be no doubts about that. They're on a bad run. And uh, their team is Johnston, Klein, Anderson, Gwehi and Ward. Lerma, Richards and Hughes. And AU, Edward and Schlupp. Um, not doing very well, Crystal Palace, at the moment. They're down in 14th place. They won't get relegated because everybody in the bottom three is shit. I mean, everyone in the bottom three is so shit... Everton had been given a 10 points deduction, were bottom of the league and are out of the bottom three in the space of two games. Everton are now not in the bottom three, even with a 10 point deduction. That's how shit Luton, Burnley and Sheffield United are. Uh, there's the Liverpool team for you though. Alisson's back, Trent, Kwanzaa, Van Dijk, Samiskus, Sabozloy, Endo and Gravenberg and then Salah, Nunez and Diaz. Um, I think it's an interesting lineup for Manchester United today, uh, for Liverpool today. Um, I have got Nunez to score in Goldbridge and Trent to score in Goldbridge. So just keeping an eye on those two. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Um, but yeah, Alisson is back for Liverpool and there's their opportunity. Don't be so fucking fast in that. Don't be so quick. Stop, you're getting ahead of yourself. This stats carousel thinks it's the star of the show. I'm the fucking star of the show. Not you. Who do you think you're talking to? Messing around, moving along when you know I want to talk about it. 
Stop moving so fast. You're not bloody Theo Walcott. Stop it. Just wait. Be patient. I've done this for years. You're, you've only been here for a year. I've been doing this for six or seven years. Slow down. I know what I'm doing. Right, back to the league table. So, Liverpool, as you can see on the league table there, are second in the league. They've got a great opportunity to go top of the league today. If they win against Crystal Palace, which I think they will, they go top for maybe a few hours. They've actually got a better goal difference than Arsenal as well. So if Arsenal don't beat Villa, Liverpool could be top tonight. And obviously, there's nobody behind them that's going to get near them if they win tonight, unless Arsenal beat them. So there we go. The Prater cell, says Lee. Well, it can move now. It can, it can move. It can move. You, you are allowed to move now. Um, you can go back where you wanted to go. Go on, go to your stats bit. You know, I know why he wants to go there. So this is our stats carousel, sponsored by OneFootball. You can download OneFootball for free. The link is in the description, or you can scan that QR code in the top right-hand corner. All your latest breaking football news and transfer news. And on a Saturday, it's really good because it's got its quick score updates, which you can get on the app for free, Apple and Android. But the thing I really like about the OneFootball app is that we get the stats for the teams if you go into the games within the app, you can get the stats for the individual players as well. So you can see how many times Trent's passed it or how many times he's misplaced the pass or how many shots Nunez has missed, etc, etc. So check it out. I don't know why it says United for top four there. I'm not bantering you. Um, it, I, I will change that. I, I just I haven't changed it. You know, I've got to take a, I've got to take it and uh, change that for you there. So sorry about that. But United for top four, maybe. The show is driven by you. What would you like to talk about today? Um, lots to talk about. It's a massive day of action. Have you had your cod liver oil marks is facing Dexter? No, I haven't actually. And Daniel Akanji, thank you very much for your super chat. Really appreciate that. And I bought Keller, Keller in as well, says Nigel. Yes. Um, yeah, um, I, 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 I agree with you. I thought Kelleher coming in today was a, was a masterstroke because I didn't think Alisson would be available and I thought that Liverpool would keep a clean sheet. But Alisson is back, available. Uh, McAllister is still out for Liverpool. Um, their bench, for those who are interested, uh, Gravenberg obviously starting with Sabozlai and Endo. Their bench is Gomez, Canate, Jones, Gakpo, Elliot, Doak, McConnell, Kelleher and Bradley. Crystal Palace's bench, Tomkins, Alisi, De Oliveira, Mateta, Eboe, Amada, Matthews, Reedwald and Ozzo. So uh, Crystal Palace are in a really bad state at the moment. I'd fancy Liverpool to win this. But Chris Danbull has not been a happy hunting ground for Liverpool in the past. And maybe it can be again. Lucas says, howdy, Mark. Hope you're well. Greetings from Texas. Come on, Palace. Get a draw at least, says Addy. What a fantastic day of football we've got going for you today, though. As a reminder, we're live for this game and uh, we've also got, I'll be doing the three o'clocks, but on the United stand, Man United against Bournemouth and then back on here for um, Arsenal at Villa later. And can I just say, I don't know why this hasn't been spoken about enough, but Aston Villa's demolition of Liverpool, of, 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 of Man City on Wednesday night is probably, I couldn't think of a game in the last two years, that anybody has destroyed Man City in the way that they did. Destroyed them. Statistically battered them. Dominated them. Like, I've seen Man City lose games in the last couple of years, but I haven't seen a team absolutely annihilate them. And I just don't think it got the exposure it should have done. If Arsenal did that, or Liverpool did that, or Man United did that, they'd never shut up about it. But Villa, it's like, oh, well done. Well done. It's like the unappreciated child getting another 20 out of 20 in the spelling test. Well done. We're not that interested in you. Johnny plays for Manchester United. What do you think about Christmas um, Eve? Uh, uh, well, I thought you, Joel, I thought you were asking me about Christmas Eve. I, I, I'm a big fan of it, actually. I think it's quite an exciting day. But he's added more to that. What do you think about Christmas Eve, Chelsea against Wolves? I think it's a bloody disgrace. Joel, I think it's absolutely disgraceful. I won't be watching it. I mean, fair play. I almost think if you watch Chelsea play Wolves on Christmas Eve, it's an indication of you as a person. Um, yeah, I, d I do. I, I think it's like, what are you doing with your life if you're watching Chelsea against Wolves on Christmas Eve? And I'd even say that to Wolves and Chelsea fans. 
what are you doing with your life if you're watching Chelsea versus Wolves on Christmas Eve? Like, there's a, even if you're on your own, put Home Alone on, you know, it works. He's on his own, you're on your own. Christmas, spend it with Kevin. Um, family, get Monopoly out. Bit of charades. Down the pub with your mates. Prepping the dinner for tomorrow, wrapping presents. I mean, there's just so many things you could be doing. Not to mention certain sites on the web on website, although for some of you. Anyway, let's let's just say that 66% uh, have said I should have gone with Saka over Ganacho. I heard British people don't like garlic bread. Is this true, says Bran? I bloody love garlic bread. I bloody love it. Busy day today, though. We're pumped up. Liverpool on the attack here. It's going to be one of those afternoons. Right, um, travelled from Cardiff to Leamington on the train Christmas Eve a couple of years back. I feel sorry for any away tra fans travelling on Christmas Eve, says Alex. Oh, I've got a funny story to tell you, actually. Uh, this is what we do here. Make sure you subscribe, smash a like, get involved. It's Christmas time, we're kicking back. I've even gone for the comfy. You can tell I'm doing a lot of streaming today. The jeans are off. Don't get too excited, ladies. Or men. I mean, I'm not interested, but I, you know, I, I might appeal. But the reality is... Um, um, I've got the tracksuit bottoms on because I'm feeling stretchy. I feel like I need to be stretchy and moving around. I'm going to be streaming for a long time. So I've got my talk sports show at half seven as well. So it's a long old day. But um, Liverpool just passing it around the back here. But uh, funny story. At least I thought it was funny. Let's see what you think. Um, talking about busy trains. I was in London. I was in London, wasn't I? In London on, uh, on Thursday. A um, couple of things to do. You'll see that you'll see the video evidence soon. Soon, not nothing criminal. I wasn't robbing banks, although I probably would get a right way with that if I did it. But um, the bottom line is that um, I'm in London and uh, I uh, I go to get the train. And normally there's a, the trains back to where I live are every half an hour. So I saw there was one at seven o'clock. I thought, now nah, I'm still in the pub. I'm not going yet. So um, I basically thought, oh, I'll go and get the half seven train. No half seven train. I thought, what's going on here? There's always a train every half an hour and it's Christmas. What's going on? So anyway, I left the pub at seven o'clock. I was on the other side of London, got on the underground, went across to Marleybone Station. Um, I was there at about 20 to, 20 to eight and they hadn't announced the platform for my train. But loads of people were waiting around the screens and I thought, oh, something's going on here. This train's going to be... Some, something told Goldbridge this train's going to be busy. So anyway, they announced it. Uh, they're waiting for the announcements, but Goldbridge is switched on. Goes up to one of these uh, people in an orange coat. Um, I think he worked there. And I said, uh, well, I, I do think he works there because I said, uh, what platform? There's a load of trains here, mate, but they're not telling us what platform. Where, where's the train to platform? Now, he could have bantered me, but he didn't. He goes, uh, massive fan of your content. Um, it's platform one. I went, thank you. Went up to platform one. By the time I got there, they just opened the doors. I get on the train. Now, the train's not leaving till five past eight. And um, this is at 20 to eight. So it's 25 minutes before. Got on the train, made a, took, a, you know, like, 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 like Paul Scholes with a, with a 30 yard pass, made an absolute precision decision. Went down to the end of the train and you know like they've got all these train seats that are in a two. At the end of the train they've got these just one seats that face each other where you're on your own. So I sat down there, literally just sat down, putting my headphones on, um, sending a few messages. Looked up and, and it's absolutely rammed. And I went, I looked at my watch and it's quarter to eight. The train's not going for 17 minutes. It's rammed. People are you know, walking down there. Um, next thing I know some overweight person, and they were overweight, I'm sorry, you were overweight, and you were scoffing a big bumper pack of crisps. He's standing right in front of me, but um, 
I'm like, I'm not that bothered because I've got my headphones on and I'm like, I don't care. I don't have to listen to him munching on his crisps. So anyway, the, the funny bit was, he, the, keep an eye on the guy with the crisps because the train's getting really rammed. I'm like, there's still 10 minutes to go before the train goes and it's absolutely rammed. So rammed that the people by the doors are getting really stressed. This is not the underground. This is a rural train to Birmingham. You know, it's not rural, but you know, the, this train is never rammed. It's rammed, right? Anyway, there's people shouting from the other end. Can you move down the aisle, please? There's definitely room. There wasn't room. There wasn't room. And, and why should people squash themselves up for what? You know, the next stop isn't for half an hour. So you stood up for at least half an hour. I mean, there was an old lady stood near me. She was going to have to stand. And, and she had a stick. She looked really frail. She didn't have a seat. I was stood there looking at her going, somebody should offer her a seat. But... But, you know, nobody did. So at the end of the day, I just sat there and uh, listened. Anyway, I've got my headphones in, but I've turned them off because it's getting heated. Like people are arguing and all sorts of stuff. Anyway, this guy eating the crisps just gets fed up, crunches his crisps, he's finished them. He's probably a bit hung hangry because he's not got anything else to eat. There's people down near the doors about 10 meters going, can people just move down? There's loads of room. And this guy with the crisps goes, can you all just be quiet, please? What does the window say? Quiet zone. And I thought, mic drop. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It just made the people angrier who were trying to get on. But he just kept saying it. They were going, there's no need to be like that. Just because you're on the train and going home. And he was just going, shh, quiet zone. Don't stop. Don't shush me. Don't shush me. Just because you've, you've, you've got your place. I've got to wait another hour for a train. And he went, shh, quiet zone. And just kept saying it. And I thought, you know what? It's a good job there's a load of people away. But he looked like he could look after himself. Uh, Jack says, if Arsenal beat Villa, will they be favourites for top four, says Jack. Arsenal will get top four anyway. Arsenal will get top four. Uh, come on, Mark. Would you watch United on Christmas Eve if they were playing? Leave Wolf fans alone. They need some enjoyment. No, Alex, if United were playing Christmas Eve, I'd have to watch it. I'm so happy that we're not. But I suppose it's a warning for the future. That it's still nil-nil here, by the way. Liverpool are just knocking the ball about. Crystal Palace trying to be a bit energetic at the start of this game, but it's a bit of a boring start, if I'm being honest with you. What a ball by Van Dijk, that is. Just played right through the midfield of Liverpool. And, uh, oh, it's unlucky. Although, Salah's got it. He's not going to shoot from there. He goes, cr crosses it in. Samiskas shouldn't have took a touch, goes for a corner. That all comes from Van Dijk's pass. Van Dijk's pass right through the Crystal Palace midfield. Really good ball. Uh, hi, Mark. What's your thoughts on the FA Cup third round TV picks? Shouldn't this be given to the smaller clubs left in the cup as they need the TV money, says Ali? Yeah, but no one wants to watch Swindon play bloody Accrington Stanley. I presume United are on the telly. Um, as long as we're on the telly, I don't care. Um, but, yeah. Um, it was. I thought it was quite funny. I don't think he meant it to be funny, though. I think he actually was... Just saying it's the quiet zone. But I did think it was quite funny. Um, Jack says meant for the Prem title. Classic Chilton Railways, that, says MC. Well, apparently, apparently the trains are all knacked, knackered up in the UK at the moment. So if you're trying to get out of London, you're probably doing it on a reduced service. And the trains would be rammed anyway. So you can imagine the carnage, can't you? Um, hi, Mark. I like going to London. I just don't like travelling there. Hi, Mark. I live in Wolves. Season ticket holders are being offered more tickets so they bring friends on Christmas Eve, says Connor. Do we genuinely think that it will be quite empty on Christmas Eve then? I mean, I, I, I just think that's... Uh, I just think it's stupid. I, I think there will be people who watch it on Christmas Eve afternoon, but I do question what you're doing with your life. I mean, neither of them are in a bloody title race either. I mean, I even if I was a Wolves or Chelsea fan, if my mate said to me... Um, well, there's a lot of options. You know, if my mate said to me, do you want to be, come down the pub at three o'clock on Christmas Eve for a few drinks? I'm there. Are we going to put Slade on? Yeah, play a bit of pool. I'm there. If my family said, do you want an early afternoon Christmas meetup party? I'm there. If somebody said to me, um, do you want to come around and play Monopoly? I'm there. I'm not watching Wolves against Chelsea on Christmas Eve. United are on the telly. You've got that wrong. We're playing Wigan on the Monday night on the telly. Swivel on that. I'm doing all three games today, yes. We're doing uh, Crystal Palace-Liverpool here. 
uh, straight on to United stands for the Bournemouth game at three, and then back on here for Villa Arsenal, which is uh, well, I'm looking forward to Newcastle Spurs tomorrow as well. I think that's going to be a cracker. Liverpool on the break here. Salah, he's overrun it, but he's still going to get it. Can he cross it? He tries to cross. Nah, it's too close to the keeper. Liverpool on the break there, but good keeping by Johnston. Paul says Christmas Eve is now special apart from it's my, girl, my wife's birthday. Mr. Tration says, what are your thoughts on George Michael? I think he's underrated. Well, he's underground at the moment. He's been dead a few years, but as an actual singer, I like him. He, he writes, uh, he, he did a song, It's Always Christmas Time. Jesus came to stay. I do believe in peace on earth and I can watch the TV all day. And it feels like Christmas. Yeah, I like his songs. Mark, you should watch Godzilla, says Jay. Score predictions for Villa Arsenal, Mark, says Taylor. Well, I've not put Saka in my FPL team. I've benched Salah. Careless Whisper is a classic, Liam. Um, I've benched Salah, so um, I, fancy, I don't fancy many goals. Although Villa play a high line. I'm, I think 1-1 one, one, one in that. I think it might be 1-1. One, one. Uh, Fish Dorito says, best, best time, best team to challenge City. Why would City be challenged when they are in fourth? Should be best team to challenge Arsenal and Liverpool. Now, I still think that um, Man City are the favourites. And I think Liverpool and Arsenal have got to make hay. Um, I mean, they're playing each other two weeks today. I can't wait for that. Talk about Christmas. That's it for me. 23rd, half past five, Liverpool, Arsenal. Watch that. Probably do my talk sports show. Glass of mulled wine. That's me done with football until Boxing Day. 23rd, nine o'clock, out. I'm out. Literally out. I'm going out. I'll be in a club. Um, but, um, no, I won't. I don't do that anymore. But I will, uh, that's it. I'm, I'm done. I mean, I'll still do like previews and, you know, reactions, but I'm not doing any, I'm not watching any, I'm not watching matches, which means I'm just not watching Wolves, Chelsea. I can't even believe it, really. I can't believe they put that on. I'm not liking the sun on the pitch at Selhurst Park here. It's, uh, it needs to go inside. Uh, nice play, though, by Diaz. Tries to shoot. Comes back to Endo. Let's see where this goes. And it goes backwards. I appreciate your general lack of bias when talking about other clubs. Do you think pundits make insane, unbiased comments because it it, 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 get, it gets clicks, says Harry? I just don't think many people are able to love football um, the way most fans do. Um, maybe because it's like they've played the game. But uh, I know a lot. Even the nice ex-players have vendettas against certain players and clubs. And I think it's just that competitive element I don't. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a bad thing that a Carragher or whoever is biased. I think it's just they probably spent 20, 30 years of their life playing that style of um, living. You know that style, and um, it's hard for them to switch it off. Whereas for football fans, I've spent all my life watching football. You know, I was watching Liverpool play bloody Arsenal when I was nine. Like it's just the. It's just the way it is. Uh, shot from distance there, but Liverpool still got it. Into Diaz, he's in the box, back into the full back. Samiskas is Diaz. Nice little touch. Gravenberg can get the bend on that. It's a good block by Palace, but a uh, oh, mistake there by Sabozloy. Uh, afternoon, Mark. Hope you're well. Tuned in. How's this game going? Hoping Liverpool drop points, says Kieran. I don't think Liverpool will drop points. I think Palace are a crap at the moment. Um, I think Palace beat Man United, didn't they? At Old Trafford. I'm the overweight man from the train. Cheers, mate. Can't even eat a packet of crisps anymore, says Joey. It wasn't just a packet of crisps, though, was it? I was being polite. It was um, It was one of those bumper packets of crisps. And I'm not talking about the grab bags. I'm talking about one of these. If I put it in front of my face, it'd fill my face. I'm thinking length of a tube of Pringles and wide. It was a family bag of crisps. And it barely touched the sides. You looked really frustrated when you finished. And before that, I'm pretty convinced you were eating a bloody BLT as well. Um, 
Look, it's up to you what you do, but let's not pretend that um, you're eating a bag of crisps in peace. I'm, you know, I was going to put an umbrella up to keep myself safe from the bloody spray of you chomping away. But your banter was top class. Your banter was top class. As George Michael, uh, Mary J. Blige is a classic, even though it's not their song. It's a Stevie Wonder song. What was it, Joel? Have you seen Christmas movie Trapped in Paradise, is Christian? Nope. Is it a porno? <laughs> is, is the porno, is she called Paradise? Um, anyway. Um, can you please sing Cup of Tea and Biscuits, says Daniel? No, I'm not in the mood. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a stretch. I'm feeling quite active today, which is weird for me because I, I had a few drinks last night. But um, you know what it was? I was editing a video that's coming out very soon on this channel. It's a bit like a YouTuber football end game, and I'm in goal, and uh, I wasn't happy about my mid drift. I was all right down the bottom bit, the, you know, it looks fine, but it's more I'm more my, my stomach. So uh, 2024, I'm gonna get on a bit of a fitness drive. Ow, let me finger. Uh, Milo says, where can I get the shirt? Links in the live chat for you, mate. Just go to United Stands Shopify if you want to search it. Oh, I knew someone had asked me about Joey Barton. Um, well, you know me. I won't sit on the fence. Um, look, I haven't honestly got a problem if somebody doesn't like Gary Neville's commentary. So if somebody doesn't like one of the females' commentary, absolutely fine. It's just the general, just the generalisation of I don't like female commentators because that's sexist, in my opinion, because there may well be a female commentator that's really, really good. Now, I don't, the thing is for me, I don't really have a horse in this race because I don't, I don't listen to commentary. I'm watching a game now, you're my commentary. So I don't listen to it. So I don't even know whether he's right or wrong that all female commentators are bad, but that's still, that's his opinion. Um, I think there's some shockingly bad male uh, commentators, but we've just been talking about bias there, but to be honest, I think I, I I actually think he's just doing it for for notoriety. Um, shock shock jockey. I think he's just doing it because he's irrelevant. I mean, who is who is Joey Barton at the end of the day? Um, thug life, isn't it? I mean, this is a guy who went to play in France and you know spoke in a French accent, English, wasn't it? I think I think he's you know what I think he's probably doing it to wind people up, and he certainly got himself uh, trending, hasn't he? So you know, don't feed the troll. But my daughter plays football, so I don't like I don't I don't like sexism, you know. As as Ricky Gervais says, how how could I? My mum was a female, so but he's doing it he's doing it for uh, he's doing it for uh, clicks. But what I will say is, it's fine to say you don't like a female commentator if you name them. But I don't you can't I don't think it's well I, I don't it's not that I don't think I think it's wrong to generalise that all female commentators are bad. You know, we're not in the 1980s anymore. And it needs calling out. Uh, Mark, where where were you this Thursday and how much did a pint of beer cost? God bless, brother, uh, says Rin. I was in London. I didn't even have a pint of beer. I had a glass of red wine. And, I, and I, she said, uh, she gave me the price. I said, no, I don't want the bottle. I just want a glass. She said, that is the price of the glass. Um, I said, what is it? What's it made out of? Crystal. We're in London, aren't we? The price was ridiculous. Name a good female commentator. I don't listen to commentary, so I can't. As I say, you know, you ask me a question, I'll answer it because I'm not a coward. But I've seen it all on social media and you'll notice I haven't tweeted about it. Because guess what? Here's a life lesson for you. You don't have to have an opinion on everything. Some people think and live in a world where they think they do. You do not have to have an opinion on everything. You don't need to stick your nose in on everything. If people are passionate about it and they want to create an argument about it, crack on. I was asked a question. I gave you my answer. I haven't tweeted about it. I'm not. I'm not interested in it. I'm not. I, it's, I, I don't need to get involved in it because I, I'm not interested. I don't listen to commentary for a start. Um, Catherine says it's the assumption women don't know about football. I think Serena Vagum knows a bit more than him. Emma Hayes too. Well, yeah. This it's the sexism that, that should that should be called out. Uh, Tightbridge says, Tom, mate, would you pay 
15 pounds for a small glass of red wine. God knows what the bottle was. There's London, nice picture of London. Anyway, the counterpoint to this is Tim Sherwood gets paid to talk about football. Absolute clown. I'd rather listen to a bin talk than him. Um, like Bong Lahore, he's another one. Like, there's so many shit ex-players talking to us about football that clearly don't watch it. You can't generalise on, on gender. Uh, Mark's a Scrooge, says Mario Franco. And it's this, I've done that one from Catherine. I actually had a Big Mac, not a BLT. So up yours, pal. Overweight man from trains, says Joey. Thank you, mate. Two different people now. Uh, anyway, it's still nil-nil here. 22 minutes gone. Look, in the title race, it's about winning games, isn't it? Uh, Trapped in Paradise, 1994 with Nicolas Cage. It's a Christmas film. Tell you what I watched last night. I think I'm getting emotional in my in my old age as well. It's only got 10% on Rotten Tomatoes, mate. I think it might be shit. Never heard of it, but I might check it out. Trading Places is on Amazon. Uh, it's clear what he wants to do. Grow a base of sexist uh, incel followers and launch a podcast media channel that goes back to the old days, says Blicket. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be calling me out next. He'll be like, why, do any why does anybody watch this shit? He's never played the game. Uh, and I'll just go, ignore. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even give you the steam off my piss, Joey. You're a nobody. Who are you? Like, I'm not, I wouldn't do a podcast with him. It just, it just comes across as a complete and utter clown. Um, Jose Mourinho never played the game, really. Best coach ever been. Arsene Wenger, the same. I, I just think these sort of narrow-minded views are dangerous. And if they want to gob off, then you've got to gob off back. Because you're, you're defending democracy. You're defending all the things that are important. And I'm not talking about being woke. If anybody has an opposition to somebody who speaks complete and utter shit, you're woke. It's not woke. I've got, I've got two daughters. I'm married. Like, they're all females. And they're fantastic people because they're the same as everybody else. I, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I will call it out because I think it's bloody stupid. It's setting us back decades starting to talk about shit like that. Everyone's entitled to an opinion, of course they are, but everyone's entitled to call a prat out. And, uh, you know, my daughter's off playing football at the moment. I'm massive, you know, I'm getting WhatsApp updates on what's going on. You know, you're telling me she's, she's going to have to come up, uh, uh, grow up in a world where she's playing football, uh, but Joey Barton says she can't talk about it. Shut up. You've start me off now. Mark, my boyfriend says he wants a hairstyle like you. Easy. Go to the hairdressers. Short back and sides. Shaved in, uh, razored in uh, parting, and you're away. Um, Kenneth says, you were making the point about wins versus draws. That's how United are that close, winning games that were almost draws. Yes, Kenneth. I remember Arsenal did this. Remember Arsenal did this. I don't know whether it was last season or the season before. Arsenal did this. They didn't draw games. If you don't draw games, you'll go up the league table. Man United, I don't even, I don't even understand how we're only three points behind Man City. And that three points is them beaten us at Old Trafford. It's so true. But if you don't draw, it's a great thing. I remember Potter with Brighton. They drew loads of games one season. And if they'd only drawn half of them and won them, they'd be well up. Start bench sell. Xavi, Modric, Iniesta. Love the content, Marks' show. I would start Iniesta, bench Xavi and sell Modric. And I'd be surprised if anyone disagreed with that. Uh, one of the best football puns, it's Stunt Peg, and she's not even the mainstream, so up yours, Joe. Yeah, she's fantastic, Joel. Uh, I'm going to do a bit of content with her next year at Solihull Moors. Um, she does some really good vlogs and stuff, so yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, look at the Home Alone movie's Rotten Tomato score, says Gary. All right, I'm going to look at this Paradise thing. Anyway, look, it's still nil-nil here. I've got to bring it back to Christmas. Um, Christmas. 
What a day yesterday. You can't top this for me in relation to Christmas viewing. What an array of Christmas stuff I watched yesterday. Get ready for this and mark it out of 10 in the chat, right? You can even try and beat it if you want, but this is what I did yesterday. So yesterday, Seb wasn't very well. So uh, he was on. He was in the living room and uh, he was uh, on his iPad. So um, got to about two o'clock and uh, goal! No, my God, what a save! What a save by Alisson. That, to me, save of the season. Save of the season. That is unbelievable. That is unbelievable. Alisson is unbelievable. I can't believe that doesn't go in. He gets a little bit of luck, but that is incredible. What have I just seen? He's like bloody Spider-Man in goal. He saves it, and then I think he shoots out some web and pulls it back in. That is unbelievable. We'll talk about this in a minute. Lewis says, favourite film to watch at Christmas. Doesn't have to be a Christmas film. We'll come back to that. But what a save. They've got to show the replay. The producer will be saying, cut, cut. We need to see in the replay. Trent's overhit the cross on purpose. What a save. He gets a little bit lucky. I don't know whether it's a world-class save or it's luck. Or what I think it is, is a bit of both. Cross comes in. Palace player shoots. Oh, it's a great save. It's a great save because it's almost on him. Good power. Two hands. No, you've got to say it's a great save because the way he's got his hands, he's palmed it away from the goal. It goes on to the post. Look at the reactions as well. And Trent's there to clear it. Oh, it's a cracking save. Best goalkeeper in the world, even as a United fan. Uh, this is probably the most, you know, this is the most valid opinion when it comes to, they're going to score anyway now. Oh, is he giving a penalty? He's giving a penalty to Palace. Penalty to Palace. Van Dijk. He's giving him a yellow card. I mean, is it double jeopardy? Genuine attempt to get the ball. It's all going on. This game's suddenly come alive. It's a Christmas cracker. Anyway, the save by Alisson, he is the best goalkeeper in the world. From a Manchester United fan, consistently, Ben Foster and Watto say it to me all the time as well, but I already had the opinion, he is the best player in the world. Uh, that is a penalty, yes. Van Dijk sticks his foot in. Genuine attempt to win the ball. Doesn't get it. Trips the player. Penalty. Stonewall. No, no messing about it, about that. No, he can't complain. It's a penalty. It's a penalty. Yellow card to Van Dijk. So, uh, they need Alisson again here. He's just made an incredible save. Best goalkeeper in the world. Van Disney's been exposed, says GM. No, it, it, I don't know why they're checking this on VAR. This is what annoys me. Why are, they why are they checking this? I've already seen it. Oh, they're looking for a foul in the build-up. Ah. Oh. I don't agree with this. I just don't agree with this. This is not going to be a penalty. Look, I just don't, I don't, I don't, it is a foul on Endo, and they've gone for a foul. I just don't agree with this, it's just too much delay again, we're not fucking playing cricket, we're playing football. The fuck are we doing going back and checking this sort of stuff? How far before the goal is this? I mean, it's a, it's a foul. It is a foul. That won't be a penalty. But it's how long they take. It's how long they take. We've been waiting three minutes now. Three minutes. And it's still going. We don't need this in football. 
Liverpool fans quite rightly will be saying we do need this in football, but we don't need this in football. Four fucking minutes. Uh, Clayton says, I hate Palace. I lost to them on Football Manager in the Carabao Cup quarterfinals on penalties. So you've got 22 professional footballers who've been playing for half an hour stood around now. 22 professional footballers stood around for five minutes because these dickheads don't know what they're fucking doing. Yeah, well, we, know, we know it's not a penalty. We know it's not a penalty. Just fucking make the decision. Like, as soon as you saw it, you knew it wasn't going to be a penalty. Three minutes ago, I knew they weren't going to give a penalty. So why have they took three fucking minutes? Knobheads. Absolute rubbish. What I want to know why it takes so long. I know it's a foul. As soon as I saw it, I said it's a foul. That's a foul. No penalty. Play on. Three fucking minutes for them to look at that. I'm fed up a bit. I'm fed up a bit. Look, Liverpool fans, I, I agree. You know, you're going to say it's a foul. I don't agree going back and looking at stuff before the penalty. I just want to know whether it's a penalty or not. I don't want to re-referee the game. If the referee misses a foul in the build-up, then I'm not really that interested. The referee's fucked up. But how long it takes, fucking joke. It's it's a joke. 26 replays, says Chris. Um, I, look, first time I saw it, it's a foul. You know, don't give the penalty. Some crunching tackles going in, though, at the moment. The game has come alive. Correct decision. Yes. How long it takes. Fucking joke. Absolute joke. I don't know why it takes that long. Separately, I don't like going back and looking for stuff in the build-up to a goal. Just look at the actual incident. Um... What's your streaming plans for today, says Stephen. So we're doing Crystal Palace, Liverpool, as you can see. Straight on to United Stand to do Bournemouth against Manchester United. Then back on here to do Arsenal, Aston Villa. And then on to Talk Sport to do the Goldbridge call-in show. So busy day, but uh, we love it. We love it. Uh, Sharath Kamath Fitness says, has there ever been an instance where the referee has gone to the TV and not changed the decision? I don't get it. Says, yeah, well, this is, this is a great point. Um, you know... My favourite Christmas film is The Shining, says Nelly, because of the snow, probably. Um, my daughter was conceived quicker than that. The AR check, says Jamer. Uh, well, you might, your wife must have been happy because that the AR check went on for ages. So you obviously lasted a long time. But Van, Van, Van Dyke's yellow card was rescinded. Yes, MC, because uh, obviously the foul, the penalty wasn't given. So, um, yeah, it's... Um, this game will be going on for fucking ever now. He's going to have to add on at probably about eight minutes now. I'm, you, know, you know what? I was in a good mood and I'm not in a good mood now because I'm fed up of watching 50-minute halves. 55-minute halves. I'm, I'm fed up of it. You used to watch a half-12 game and know you'd be done by 20 past two. Nowadays, you, you might not be done until three o'clock. Maguire's faster in a 100-meter sprint than these VAR checks, says Bart. Lucian says VAR is needed for such objectivity. But you're not listening, Lucian. I'm not, I'm, I don't like VAR. I'd switch it off. I think it's a waste of time. I'd rather have human error. I mean, imagine, imagine the scenario there where VAR didn't exist. Referee gives the penalty. We'd be on the 35th minute. It'd be 1 0 to Palace. Give me that every day of the week. And that's not because I want Palace to beat Liverpool. I'm just saying, if we didn't have VAR, the penalty would have been given and the goal would have been scored or it would have been saved and we'd play on. Instead, we get five minutes of fucking God knows what. I mean, I don't even know what, 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 what we've just watched there. We saw the penalty. It's a penalty. We then see they're reviewing the foul on Endo. It's a foul. Referee, have a look at it. It's a foul. But they take so long. They're slowing the game down. And I tell you what, People don't want to listen to this, but it's true. The amount of injuries we're getting is because footballers are stopping and starting and playing too much football. 
We've never had so many injuries in football and no, but I don't know. I don't know why all these journalists are moaning about being banned from fucking press conferences when the golden ticket is to write a fucking article about how VAR is destroying the Premier League through injuries because so many players are getting injured with muscle injuries because of the game stopping and starting and having to play another 15, 20 minutes a game per game three times a week. But nobody will talk about it. I want to, no, I want to ask, I want to ask Ten Hag about Sancho. Do your fucking job. Like, I, I'm, I've been on about this for about two months. When are we going to get this great journalism article about the correlation between VAR, VAR's incompetence and delays and the amount of, amount of injuries teams are getting? Mark, at this point, they could pay some of us great money to be a VAR ref and we would be better at it. I don't understand how thousands of us who aren't refs made the call before the actual refs did, says Fernando. Mate, I'm doing a video that's coming up in the next couple of weeks where I'm the ref, basically. And there was loads of dodgy decisions, apparently. But then when I watched them back, I got most of them right. And there was no delays. It was like, shut up, play on, it's not a penalty. Or that's a pan ball. You know, just get on with it. Uh, 58 Go says, then if you switch it off, whenever there's a human error, fans and managers will be begging to switch it back on to 58 Go. But look, I, I know VAR is here to say, stay. stay. But what is pissing everybody off is the delay. They're so fucking slow. Offsides in the Champions League are super fast because they've got the technology. We haven't even got the bloody technology. So oh, if we're keeping VAR, it needs to be quicker. It needs to be a lot quicker. And, what you know, you look at that foul on Endo. How long did it take? Two minutes? Three minutes? Why do you need to keep looking at it? If you say it's not a foul, face the consequences. If you say it is a foul, face the consequences. Just get on with it. It's subjective. There's not, it's not a fucking offside. You've got to make a decision. Is it a foul or isn't it a foul? You gave the penalty against Van Dijk instantly. You were right. Like, look at it. Is it a foul? Oh, I don't know. Oh, let me have, a, let me have a look, another angle. It's a foul. We can see it's a foul straight away. If you're driving down the fucking road and you see a cat on the side of the road, do you have to come back three or four times? Oh, it could be a cat. It looks like a cat. Could be a cat. I think it is a cat. No, let's go past again. Yeah, I think I'm 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 ninety nine percent sure it's a cat. It's because that's because it is a fucking cat. You saw it. Uh, Crystal Palace are doing quite well at the moment. Anyway, look back to the positives. Allison, fantastic. Seventy five percent possession for Liverpool, but I don't feel that they're. This game's got. Luton vibes at the moment. Remember Liverpool away to Luton? They need to score. Yeah, it's getting a bit of Luton-y vibes here for Liverpool where, you know, they're getting dragged into something. And, uh, you know, you've got to win these games if you want to if you want to uh, get promoted, uh, if you want to win the title. Um, I was going to say there as well, uh, could be a lion, says Ian. Still, still, still technically a cat. Same, same thing. Uh, Zoom is in the chat now, apparently, because we've been talking about cats. Um, anyway, look, I was talking about Christmas a little bit. Let's get, let's lighten the mood a little bit. So yesterday... Uh, Seb wasn't that well, so gets to about two o'clock, and uh, me and the missus said, "Oh, let's just let's just stop for the day, stop working, and uh, let's um, just go in the living room and watch a Christmas film." Put Bridget Jones' Diary on. Oh, what a great film! I mean, it's not normally my courts. I mean, rom coms are not really my thing, but cracking Christmas film. Watch that. Um, Bridget Jones' Diary. Went out for Chinese. Came home. Did the eight o'clock show on United Stand. Went upstairs. Watched part two of the Office Christmas special. You know the one where uh, uh, it was the the last one, wasn't it? Um, and then after that, watched Rambo: First Blood, which is based at Christmas. So what a, what a hat trick! Bridget Jones, second episode of uh, the Office Christmas special, and then finished it off with Rambo: First Blood, which is also a Christmas film because it's set at Christmas. So three cracking film recommendations there, and they got me right in the festive mood. Um, fed up with this. Why are they so slow, says Steve? It's ridiculous. Do you remember the Essex Lion? 
kind of throws a spanner in your analogy, says Laughlux. No, I don't, so it doesn't. Uh, Fernando says, Mark, at this point, they could pay some of... Uh, yeah, I've done that one from Fernando. Thank you, Fernando. Uh, thanks for your super chats, by the way. Thank you for contributions. I appreciate that. Um, it's called Rambo First Blood. I, could, I just call it Rambo 1. Roger. Do you like the Pogues, Mark, says Daniel? Well, I, I like the Christmas song. I've never heard another song they've done. Prediction for Spurs Newcastle, says Rian. I'm predicting we'll do a watch along for it tomorrow, and that is all. Um, no, I predict, I fancy Spurs to win that, but Newcastle can be very, very surprising. Got a massive game on Wednesday, Newcastle, as well, haven't they? Um, cross comes in, headed away by Van Dijk. Bad Swag says the other problem with VAR is referees are scared to make the wrong call, so they spend too long trying to make sure they are right, even when it's obvious. But that's just that's just being crap at your job. I'm sorry. If I was a referee, I wouldn't care. That would be my mot that would be my mentality. I don't care. Which you may pick up on from the live chat. I don't care. I have an opinion. That's what it is. If people don't like it, tough. Just make a bloody decision. Like, it's indecisiveness. I would never employ these people to work for me because they, they, they give it they give off every week indecision, which is a lack of confidence. Make the fucking decision. My motivation as a referee is to get the game done as quick as possible. It's a 90-minute game. These players play a lot of football at an intense level, and I'm failing them and fans if I'm taking three or four minutes to make an obvious decision. I'm slowing it down. I'm, I'm increasing the chances of injury. I'm, ru I'm ruining the, spec uh, the, 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 the uh, spectacle. Um, and that's what we've had since August. Referees who are slowing down the game, causing more injuries and ruining the spectacle of football because they're selfish, indecisive twats. Um, can't wait to see your sack at the Christmas show, Marks is Majestic Hero. Yep, yeah, Christmas show Monday night. I think it's sold out, but uh, check it out. United Stand Christmas show Monday night. Looking forward to that. Are you streaming EAFC next week? No. And uh, I think, uh, great show, Mark. Saka versus Rashford, talent, not form. Saka, Taylor. I'm a massive fan of Saka. I think he's a fantastic player. Um... You know, just because he plays for Arsenal, I'm not going to use red tinted glasses. It's like what I was just talking about. Alisson, best goalkeeper in the league. Best goalkeeper in the league. He's a fantastic goalkeeper. Don't like it, but he is. Lovely ball in. Uh, here's Nunez. Oh, terrible layoff. It's that final ball that's killing Liverpool here. And uh, there's a foul. Well, we're about to hit the 45th minute, but it won't be the 45th minute. I haven't stopped EAFC. I've just taken a pause. Um, Christmas gets very, very busy, so I'm not going to commit to streams that I can't do. So I was asked a question. I don't tell any lies. It's Christmas time. There's no need to be afraid. At Christmas time. Thoughts on the game so far? Well, I think Liverpool need to be a little bit more dominant here. I feel like Palace have grown into the game. Um, I think the decision on the penalty was the right decision. It took bloody ages. That's the only problem. Um, but Liverpool just a little bit untidy on the ball. They just need to take a little bit more care of it, really. He'll be top of Christmas, that is all. Cross comes in. Salah. Trent. No, it was Sir Bosley. Corner. Um, Chris Brown says, Mark, what's the largest animal you could single-handedly cling film to a lamppost? <laughs> oh, my God. 
Um, well, pro I could probably do it to a horse or a cow. Like, they're not going to fight back. They're quite placid animals if they're well-trained. Rashford has the same talents as Mbappe, says Majestic Hero. Okay. Roger Benjamin says, I take it no one in the chat has seen Rambo First Blood Part 2. Or, it's, it's Rambo 2, Roger. No, no, don't, don't, don't bow to, um, you know, Hollywood hype. Break it, don't fake it. It's Rambo 1, Rambo 2, Rambo 3. I think Rambo 1's the best. And it's got Christmas vibes. How's your FBL, Mark? Says Paul. Um, well, we've only had one game. Villa versus Arsenal prediction, says Jake. I'm going to go with a draw. I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. If Arsenal go there and win... Title is in there. Is in there. Not in that. They haven't got... They've not got one hand on the title, but they're, they've got to be favourites if they win. Here's Salah. How's your finger, Mark? Says Joel. I'm going through physio at the moment. It's getting better. It's just, uh, it's going to be a long process. I thought I'd broken it. I haven't. I have to do this a few times a day. So really just bend the finger in, hold it for 10 seconds, stretch it out. Um, yeah, it's getting better. Watch Rambo First Blood tonight and you'll go, what a great film. But also, Goldbridge is right. It's got Christmas vibes. Uh, Liverpool next game, I think, is winnable. Um, they've got... Oh, shit, it's Man United. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's definitely winnable. They've got Liverpool and uh, Arsenal at home next two games. So, yeah, def definitely winnable. Definitely winnable. Although, I've got to say, we all... Um, Liverpool have been very good this season, but for what I've seen of them today, you know, United could catch them. Like, we could catch them on a day where we got a result against them, but after last year at Anfield, I've just got no confidence. Die Hard 2 is good Christmas film as well, because it's set at Christmas. Die Hard 2 is a good film, I just don't watch it as much as Die Hard 1. Um, but yeah, I think... Um, might be writing United off a little bit too soon because Liverpool haven't been as great today. They've not been at the races today, Liverpool. But obviously, as Marcus says, they are missing McAllister. Not Kevin McAllister. He'd go missing. He'd go missing in the midfield. Um, Alisson's just come back and... Um, The thing about Liverpool is, Liverpool is they're still waiting for Nunez to settle in, aren't they? Like, it's arguably they're ar arguably better, and I know he's injured, but they arguably are better when they play Jota as the false nine. Interesting ball into Trent now, grabbing Burke and uh, Palace defending well again. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel, by the way. Bottom right hand corner, we're getting very close to. Uh, 71,000, uh, we're only 300 away, bottom right-hand corner to subscribe, get involved with That's Football, uh, live for the Villa-Arsenal game as well later, Newcastle at Spurs tomorrow as well, and the Champions League is back this uh, midweek as well. Uh, we'll go through some of the fixtures coming up over the festive period, but it is half-time here, and it's Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace nil. Um, not really any controversy, really, I'm not, I'm not going to say... Liverpool's penalty should have been given because I think only a, only a Pratt would think that. Um, the big thing for me is how long it takes is is just incredible. And also, I'm not a massive fan. Um, I mean, look, th this ad delays. This 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 is a great point actually. This adds delay in itself, isn't it? Die Hard One or Rambo One? Die Hard, Corey. Um, this uh, this adds um, a good debate about VAR as well. That's when you think about it, um, we're playing so much time now. 
So much time added on in every game. So many games, so much time added on, so much stopping and starting, and a huge increase in injuries. There's a direct correlation there. But how do you fix that? Well, the game needs to be more free-flowing. We need to cut out all these delays. But when you look at that penalty, how can they cut a delay out when the referee gives the penalty, VAR checks the penalty, that probably takes 30 seconds to a minute anyway. Then when they've checked the penalty, they've got to go back and see the build-up of the goal and see if anything's happened there. Well, how far do you go back? Do you go back 10 seconds? Do you go back 30 seconds? Do you go back for the phase of play? Every pass you've got to look at, there's any physical contact there? Was there anything there? Was there anything there? And suddenly every goal is being dissected like a fucking toad in a GCSE biology class. It's it's a mess. And nobody really knows what they're doing. It's I just this is why this is why the game's getting so broken, because I don't look, Endo gets fouled. He does get fouled, but we're trying to reduce the amount of injuries. We're trying to increase the spectacle. And we're adding things in that are just going to take a long time. You've got to look at the penalty. Then you've got to go looking back as well. Then if you find something, the referee's got to review it. And suddenly, a very simple decision is gone in four or five minutes. You know, it's ridiculous. Um, Gavin says, Rambo 1 to 4 are great, but Rambo 5 is a mess. I don't think I've watched Rambo 5, Gavin. Um... But watch First Blood, it's a Christmas film. United Liverpool on my birthday. I'm a United fan, says Finn. Um, well, look, I'm excited about it next Sunday. What a game. What a game. Um, I'm just having a look at Liverpool's next few fixtures, actually. Half time here, nil nil with Palace. They need to be winning these sort of games. They've got uh, Europa League on Thursday, whatever. Uh, then they've got Man United at home on the Sunday, a week tomorrow. Then they've got West Ham in the Carabao Cup quarter final on the Wednesday. And then they've got Liverpool on the Saturday, the 23rd. Then it's Christmas, but they play on uh, the 26th, Boxing Day. They're playing um, Burnley away. And then they've got the following New Year's Day. Uh, so the following week, they've got um, Newcastle. Newcastle at home. So some big games coming up for Liverpool. They really need to do, do need to find their form um, quickly. But... Um, Still 45 minutes to go here. But, you you, you know, the, you, you look at the league table and they, they do need to... Um, they do need to uh, be taken advantage. That's as it stands. They're a point behind Arsenal. But if they can win, they go a point ahead of Arsenal. And Arsenal got a big game tomorrow. Statistically, this is how it looks. Don't forget one football. Download it. Links in the description. Get all your latest breaking football news, scores, stats, individual stats. But the... But the the headline stats for the for the teams, 77% possession for Liverpool. They've not done enough with it. No shots on target. That's the big thing. No shots on target. The best chance of the game was Crystal Palace's before the penalty. Great save by Alisson. But they're not doing enough with it at the moment, um, which is a problem. Um, right, I just need to get that overlay back because it's just disappeared, um, which I can do. I have the power to do it. Um, would you make any changes at half-time? I'm not a Liverpool fan. Um, that's the sort of stuff that you do on uh, on the um, United stand, which we will be on, of course, for the uh, Bournemouth game, which Manchester United need to win. But as, as I said, I think with Liverpool, there is still... I mean, I'm a big fan of Darwin Nunez. I think he's a, a cracking player and I do think he's a good player. But let me get what's going on here. That's all. That's for later. I do think he's a, a cracking player. But I, I, I do also think that sometimes I watch Liverpool with Darwin Nunez in the team and it look, just looks a little bit stunted. It, this game's reminding me a little bit of the, uh, the Luton game, as I said, where it's um, in the final third, it's just not working for them at the moment. But there's plenty of time and he can make changes. I mean, he's got Cody Gakpo in the team, hasn't he? So they could look at that. What, what, what? Why is that? Why is that not doing that? Alright. He'll be top of Christmas on his own. He'll be 
lights up at Christmas, that is all. It's not 2 1, don't worry. It'll be top of Christmas, that is all. Yeah, if you want a Christmas recommendation film, then certainly give Rambo First Blood a crack. It's cracking action and Christmas fair. There we go. There we go. Sorted. What's going on in the chat? Make sure you subscribe. Bottom right hand corner. Aston Villa against Arsenal at half five on here. United on... Uh, United stand straight after this. Uh, Mark, VAR rules say reviews are for goal, no goal, penalty, no penalty, direct red card and mistaken identity decisions. That review is not mentioned, says Mott. Mott. Yeah, I, I don't really get it. And I don't really like it because how far back into a game do you go and check? It's just... Um, if you don't have that, then Liverpool will say there's a foul in the build-up. But... Gremlins is a Christmas book. I just, I just, I just think we need to stop having arguments about what's not working and what is working in VAR, and actually just say it's not working in general because of how long it's taking, and that, and that, that's the thing. Um, is Rocky Four a Christmas movie? What? Because the, because it's in the snow. If you want, it's up to you. Um. VAR introduced because of the Lampard goal that wasn't a goal against the Germans. You lot, the English, complained enough and now we have VAR. You lot are to blame. You made your bed, now lie in it, says Maury. Um, very xenophobic there. You said it twice, you lot, as well. Um, e are you Joey Barton in disguise? Are you Joey Barton in disguise? Um, but, look, you're wrong. You're wrong anyway because... Goal line technology came in before VAR. The Lampard thing came in because of goal line technology, which we already had before VAR. So goal line technology is something different. You can have two of those to swivel on. Hi, Mark. Would you win a fight? You are a hippo. Rocket Games, you are a prat. A human being cannot be a hippo in a fight. You're dead. There's nothing a human being can do to kill a hippo. We haven't, we've got, we've, we haven't got the weapons to do it. Can't kill a, we can't kill a hippo with our bare hands. You're dead. If you've got a shotgun or a samurai sword, preferably both, you're laughing. But without it, you're dead. Um, I would take down a polar bear with a shotgun, Connor. Um, and uh, I'm just trying to get the go-ahead to actually prove it for a video for YouTube. Um, I'm not really. Um, in that case, Schindler's List is a Christmas video. Tom... Stop being silly. And does Van Dyke have a yellow? No, it was taken off. And uh, how many goals do you think Nunes will score this season? Uh, well, he hasn't missed any yet. And uh, happy Christmas, says Pro YouTube. Thank you very much. And uh, a giraffe will beat a lion. No, it won't. And it's not up to us. It's up to you, Christmas Bridge, says Jonah. Well, we're all we're all like we're all uh, we're all entitled to it, aren't we? Newcastle Spurs prediction, says the register. I think that uh, I think Spurs will win that. I mean, what? I, t I don't think I've done a live stream on that football since that. I mean, I was in London Thursday night, so I couldn't do either of those games as a watch along. And to be honest with you, I don't know whether I would have done Spurs West Ham and Everton Newcastle anyway. I, I I don't know. I don't know whether I would have done them if I could have done them, but. Wow, Newcastle losing to Everton and then West Ham beating Spurs. Although the West Ham result was incredible in the sense that Liverpool uh, Spurs really did throw that away. Um, they should have won that. They should have won that. Um, but they didn't. And fair play to West Ham. They did. Um, Mark, keep bench sell Sainsbury's, Morrison's or Aldi. I'll sell Morrison's. I'll bench Aldi. And I'll keep Sainsbury's, Samuel. I just had, actually, just before I came on, came live on air, I had, um, don't get excited, I mean, you know, came live. Uh, thoughts on City's poor form, mate, says Will. I think it's I think it's because when Rodri doesn't play or De Bruyne doesn't play, they're not as strong. Um, and are United still winning the Champions League, as you predicted earlier this season, Mark, says Wills. Well, Wills, um... 
tell me somebody who gets everything right and I'll call you a fucking liar. I, d I don't know why people get obsessed about predictions being wrong. Um, Man United finished third in the league last year and were the third best team in, in, in England and got to two domestic cup finals. Um, Man United hadn't kicked a ball when I made that prediction. So I stand by the prediction. Obviously, I look a complete twat. I can, I can accept that, but... You know, I made it in good faith. Actually, I didn't make it in good faith. I was pissed when I did that, and I admit it, admitted it at the time. Um, just catching up on Super Jacks. Um, Dak says, the longer the game, the longer the consumer watches, the more ad revenue for the Premier League. It really is that simple. And uh, Finn says, United, Liverpool, my birthday, done that. Uh, done that as well. And uh, Juju says, Mark, Meet the Fuckers is a good Christmas movie. Is it? No, there's no Christmas in it. Um, and Kieran says, maybe I missed it, but what did you do to your finger? Goalkeeping, both times. Yeah. You'll see. The video's coming out soon. Um, done that. Done that. Okay, we're all caught up now. Have you seen... I don't know what that is, Jack. I don't know what you mean. But Liverpool need to step it up here in the second half. No shots on target isn't really good enough. And uh, the opportunity to go top of the league against an underperforming Crystal Palace side is one not to be missed. But I have mentioned Luton vibes. This just has a feeling of the Luton game for Liverpool where they couldn't actually get to grips with it. So second half, they need to step it up a little bit here. Options on the bench for Liverpool. Well, they may well need to use them because they certainly need to be better in the final third. Uh, on the bench for them today, uh, I don't know who's on the bench for them today because I can't see the fucking lineup. Here we go. Um, Gomez, Canate, Jones, Gakpo, Elliot, and then the rest of them are pretty much unknowns. Doak, McConnell, Bradley, Kelleher. So you got Gakpo, you got Elliot. And you've got Curtis Jones, really, that can maybe change the game in the final third. I'd certainly be looking at Gakpo. Um, yeah. Tyrant T says, uh, meet the fuck as a Christmas film. The game's gone. The game's gone. And uh, as long as we get one goal, says Rob, that'll be enough. How far do you think Arsenal will go in the Champions League, says Thomas? I think that Arsenal are qu quietly going about their business in the Champions League. I said that a few weeks ago. Uh, they're probably not getting the credit they deserve because they play on the same night that United play, who take the headlines because we've been so shit. But uh, Arsenal are going about their business very effectively when you consider how long they've been out of it. Uh, what's your prediction for Brighton versus Burnley? Says, um, says Eddie. Well, hopefully Brighton win. I'm a big fan of Brighton and I think that they've had a load of injuries, had some really bad VAR decisions. They're currently eighth in the league with 25 points. Win today, they go above Newcastle. And potentially, well, well, they go above Spurs as well. So they go into uh, fifth place. But obviously, if United play at the same time and win, then they'd, get, they'd be in sixth place. And I think Brighton, you know, I spoke about them on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. I, I feel that Brighton are a little bit, um, they're struggling this year because of the injuries and obviously having to play in Europe as well. But they're still a fantastic side and I, I like Brighton. Um also, hi Mark, do you think you could beat Gary Barlow in a WWE cage fight? I wouldn't want to get in the ring. I wouldn't want to get in a cage, Mitchell, with Gary Barlow. He's such a nice guy. I probably would win. I'm not I'm not gonna mess around. I think I've got I think I'm more ruthless than Gary. Um He'd probably bring his piano and write a song and then I'd just, you know. And then he said doom from behind. That's not what I meant at all. But um no, I, I we're, we're we're not violent people. We'd be better off writing a Christmas song, a duet. Um, do you watch the snooker, says Rob? I try to when it's on. Right, we're coming out for the second half here. Uh, Joe Gomez has come on for Liverpool. And uh, the second half kicks off. And I wasn't ready. So I've got to do the timer now. So kiss me under the mistletoe. Pour out the wine. So Liverpool going to do this in the second half. Let us know. Or will Palace continue with their momentum? Right, we've had 20 seconds here. It's not a second. It's not 20 seconds away. But just as long as I stay. Started a top four comp at work in August. Mine are Arsenal, City, 
sorry, Arsenal first, City second, Liverpool third, Newcastle fourth. Says Kevin Rat. I can't remember. I did my predictions in August. I can't remember what my top four predictions were. Um, Silverback Gorilla versus a Grizzly Bear. Who you got? That'd be a good fight. Uh, Tot says, keep bench sale, Decore, Lerma, Lerma, or Will Hughes. Oh, I don't watch Palace enough, mate. I don't I don't watch Palace enough, so I'll, I'll sell Hughes, bench Decore, and start Lerma. But I don't watch it enough. Start bench sell, Griezmann, Kane, and Lewandowski. Sell Griezmann, bench Lewandowski, start Kane, Rocket. SB says Liverpool win this. It's obvious. I'm not a big fan of Griezmann. People are saying, I can't believe you sold Griezmann. I'm not a fan of Griezmann. Like, he re he led United up the garden path. He was going to sign for us and then uh, said no right at the end. So, you know, do the, do, the, do the crime, do the time. I'm sure he's really bothered that uh, I've, I've sold him in a hypothetical uh, start bench sell. But Cross comes in. And goes out for a throw-in. United or Bournemouth? I'm looking forward to it, Lotus. I'm, 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 you know what? It, although I'm doing three games back to back, it can be quite tiring. But they're not. It's not like you know when you do the fucking Euros and there's three games in a day and you're watching fucking um, Macedonia play Ivory Coast, which wouldn't happen in the Euros. I've just realised. But uh, you know what I mean? Like North Macedonia play Austria, and then you've got three games like that. It's a hard slog. But there's three good games today. Um, obviously, supporting United against Bournemouth is always exciting. And then Villa Arsenal is going to be a cracker as well. So, good shot. Ooh, keeper reacted late to that, but I think he thought it was wide. Maybe it was Nunez with the shot. Let's have a look. It was Diaz with the shot. And uh, Nunez nearly got on the end of it. It's a shot from Diaz. I think Nunez did get his head on it. That's why the keeper reacted late. Start bench sell Foden Sakasan. Oh, good one, Charlie. I would sell Foden. I would bench Son and I would start Saka. But you could do three very different ones with Charlie there. He said start bench sell Foden Sakasan. Are Bournemouth a great a good team, says Borge. I think Bournemouth are just Burnley by the sea. And they've got a pier. I don't think Bournemouth are that good. I think United will I think we'll win quite comfortably. Um if there are European games in a week, how many matches do you watch a week? For me, two Saturday, two Sunday, one Tuesday, one Wednesday. I don't watch Thursday. Rian, high five. Yeah, I don't I don't watch Thursday night football. I might be in February, but uh, I don't watch it through choice. I watch it through necessity. Oh, I hate Bournemouth on FIFA. Their fans are so fucking annoying. Right, I've, Kevin G says that um, Home Alone on Rotten Tomatoes has got a terrible score. 65 percent's not that bad, mate. Thirty-five percent for Home Alone Two. No, Home Alone Two. You you could argue Home Alone Two is better than Home Alone One. Very good sequel. Catherine says, "How did Seb react to Maguire player player of the month? He was very very happy. And uh, as somebody messaged me the other day, they said since Seb has spoken about how he really likes Harry Maguire, Harry Maguire has started playing well. Can he do it about Rashford? It's true." Since Seb's made it public that Harry Maguire is his favourite player, Maguire has got better. Uh, start bench sell, but but then if he if he if he publicly says he likes another player, will Maguire go shit? So you know maybe just keep stay with Maguire. Start bench sell. I've got Harry Maguire in my FPL today. Again, it's going to come off at some point. 
Start bench sell. Beppe, Obertan, Makeda, says Matt. Oh, God, I hate those ones. Uh, I'll sell Beppe, I'll bench Obertan, and I'll start Makeda for the goal against Villa. Uh, Tristan says, do you think United's problem in the transfer window has been signing big names instead of getting players with high potential, says Tristan. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think it's about it's about good scouting. Brighton and uh, Brighton have, have led the way in this, but Leicester did it a few years ago as well. Um, United's recruitment is so bad that they overpay for obvious players because that's all they can go and get. Uh, recruitment needs to be a lot better. Do I think Manion will join United in January, says Lotus? There's more chance of me signing for Manchester United in January than United signing a keeper. Hoyland scoring today. Chabel, Hoyland scores today. You've heard it here first. I've played the game. He's scoring today. Sorry, did I miss a goal? No, Palace again on the attack. Palace have looked better. Uh, Trent dropped the cross. Cross from Palace from the corner and cleared away. Mm, cross coming in from Palace, edge of the box. Uh, player went down. I tell you what, though, Ten Hag made a great point, and I, I thought I'd keep this for that's football because I mentioned it on the United Stand. Ten Hag made a great point yesterday in his press conference, and I wanted to get your thoughts on it. He said, and look, some people could say, well, this is just a manager who's trying to make excuses if he lose, loses games. But he said, in this league, everybody's killing everybody. And you could take that that he's covering up for bad performances, but I actually think he's right. You know, you look at what Newcastle happened to them at Goodison. You look at what happened to Spurs at home to West Ham. You look at what happened to Man City at Villa. Um, we've seen Newcastle lose at Bournemouth as well. I think if you're not on it this season, you will lose points. And we saw Liverpool at Luton just weren't quite at it. Had to get a late equaliser. Today, not quite at it. And you can understand why they're not quite at it as well. There's so many games. I mean, Liverpool played midweek, didn't they? They played last weekend. There's so many games and mentally it's hard to be switched on every single game. But that's what title, top winning titles is all about. But I think Ten Hag's correct. Like, there's not really... A, unless you're playing Luton, Sheffield United or Burnley, there's not really a definite guaranteed result in the Premier League. I mean, Fulham pushed Liverpool at Anfield last weekend, didn't they? It was only in the last 10 minutes Liverpool won the game. So, And then Liverpool, uh, Fulham went and smashed Forest. So... I do think that there is, it makes it great for us, but it makes it very difficult to be consistent. Um, Arsenal needed a late winner against Luton. So there's not really any dominant consistency at the moment. What's he checking? Ow, ow, what, what is he checking here? This happened fucking ages ago. It's about, it's about, about 30 seconds. It's about, it's about two hours ago. That's not a penalty. That's never a penalty. He's going to give it. Ah, he's fucking giving it. That is, ap that is absolutely incredible. I mean, look, as a, as a Man United fan, very, very happy. But that is never a penalty. And why... Why is the gap so big? 
Why is it taking why why is it taking so long? Again, this is what I'm talking about. Let me have a look at this properly. Well, if The game's the game's gone. The game's gone at the end. The game's gone at the end of the day. Um I'd be fucking fuming if I was a Liverpool fan for that. Can somebody in the chat tell me the gap between that happening and then the VAR review? You can't be going... We can't do this. We can't be going back minutes after things have happened. He needs to blow the fucking whistle. If he's, somebody's in his ear saying we've got a penalty review, blow the fucking whistle. You can't keep playing for like two minutes. One minute 45. Fuck off. Absolute joke. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm getting very, very fed up with the Premier League this season. Very fed up. They've scored 1-0 to Palace, but... I just... As a spectacle, I, 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 I'm really struggling. I'm really, really struggling now. I mean, I'm really struggling. Like, I saw it at the time. I saw Palace fans saying it should be a penalty. You don't hear anything for 30 seconds, so you go back to the conversation. And two minutes later, oh, I'm going to check it now. Like, <laughs> VAR sees that on the replay and goes... You need to stop the game and check it. That could have happened within 30 seconds and no one would moan. But one minute 45 before he goes and fucking checks it. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what. I, I, I just I just think it's a disgrace. I think it's an absolute disgrace. Like it's like it's like football, they're turning football into a game of chess. They really are turning football into a game of chess. It's so slow and oh, I just don't know what. I don't know what. Anyway, look, it's probably what Palace deserve. But as a spectacle, the game's a fucking joke. Um, Hugh Jackman. It's the correct decision. Well, I don't think you're listening, mate. I don't think you're listening. We're not talking about whether it's the correct decision. It's the officiating of the game for the neutrals like ourselves who aren't Liverpool fans and aren't Palace fans where we're watching a game and then two minutes after an incident, he's going, I want to check now. I'm talking about the ebb and flow of the game. I'm talking about the constant delays, the constant checking of things. It's destroying the game. Football's becoming like the NFL. NFL is very stop-start. It's the I like NFL, but it's very stop start, and football, to its credit, has always been fast flowing. Get on, get on, get on, get on, and I just I I just I despair at this type of officiating that we are being subjected to um, every every game. Really, it's just so frustrating, it's so frustrating to watch. Um, and also. I'm no Liverpool fan, but as a United fan, you, you, you watch that and you go, oh, we've got away with that. It's not a penalty. And then two minutes later, he goes and checks it. So it's like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like when a goal goes in, isn't it? You don't know whether to celebrate or not because somebody might have you know, wiped their nose on the referee's arse or something. So he wants to rule it out. You just don't know what, what they're going to find to take a goal away. And now you don't know if they're going to take two minutes to go back and review something. So that spontaneity is all gone. You're just living in this constant grey area of confusion, which no football fan wants. Football is about refereeing the game yourself and, you know, being able to live in the moment. And we can't live in the moment anymore because they're constantly checking and reviewing things. Uh, Marcus Rashford is on the bench for Manchester United today. Just had that confirmed. Let me put that on a tweet.
Well, that's good from a United point of view, and it's good from a Rashford point of view. He needs to be involved, definitely. Um, it's quite literally not a penalty. He went to clear it, and Palace player then you, uh, swung like that, and that far into the swing, it's quite hard to pull away, says Nathan Allen. Um, I think on the foul itself, um, I think it's a soft penalty, but I've, I've seen him be I've seen him given. Um... But I don't think it's sufficient to go back and check on a VAR two minutes later. I think if the referee gives it in real time, it's a penalty. But I don't think it's a decision that you need to go back and check. Because um, he completely miscontrols the ball as well. But, you know, technically it is a foul. I get that. It's just, it's just how long they take to do it. Chris Dambull again. Uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe, by the way. Bottom right-hand corner. In fairness to Palace, though, apart from the first 20 minutes of the game, I think Palace have been the better side. They've created more chances. I th have Liverpool still not had a shot on goal? I don't know. Uh, what is the difference uh, with this situation in the Liverpool match against Tottenham? Here they go back several minutes, says Morton. Well, exactly, yeah. And unfortunately, it's Liverpool. I think what you're saying is that... Uh, they knew in the Liverpool game that um, the goal should have been given, but they wouldn't go back and change it. Uh, yeah, whereas in this, they will. Uh, start bench sell, Hoyland, uh, Isaac, Nunez. Um, I'd probably bench Hoyland at the moment and start Isaac and sell Nunez. But I like all three, Joshua. I do like all three. Uh, Man United team news will be out in about seven minutes' time. Crystal Palace have got a free kick here. Palace, uh, Liverpool have got just under half an hour to get back into this. Nice ball into Salah. It might be the kick up the arse that they need, Liverpool. Although the final ball from Liverpool today has been shocking. Across the whole team, really bad. No shots on target for Liverpool after 62 minutes. You can't win games of football... If you don't have a shot on target. It's as simple as that. Remember Liverpool's next two league games. At Anfield. But it's Man United. And then it's Arsenal. I had Liverpool top at Christmas. They won't be top at Christmas. If they can't beat Crystal Palace. And remember, Crystal Palace have been shit lately. Like, really shit. Are they going for a second goal here? On the edge of the box. There's a battle ahead here for Liverpool to try and get back into it. They can do it. But they've got to play a lot better than this. Just not being good today. But as I was saying a few minutes ago, this league is just not like any other league season. It's not where you can be disappointed. Well, you can be disappointed, but it's not, it's not a surprise if Palace get a result. It's just that sort of a league at the moment. Ball out to, well, my, my fantasy Premier League is not going that well because I've got, I've just realised, well, I didn't realise, I've got, I've got more Salah in my team. Supposedly, they, I think they've missed McAllister today, you know. I, I've, I've, I've been saying for a while that McAllister's a very important uh, player in this Liverpool side. And um, I think they've really missed him today. Understated role that he plays. And they just can't get involved at the moment. More stoppages here from Palace. Um... Referee probably thinks he's, he's had a great game. You haven't had a great game. You're a disgrace, mate. You're a disgrace to the sport. Could have killed him. I don't know what he's all talking about. 
I'm not happy with with his performance today. Let's see, I, I'm just, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not, I'm never going to fall out of love with football because I love it, but I am just so fed up of how long games get taken to play now. I'm so fed up of it. I'm so fed up of how long gets added on, how many stoppages there are. You know, we'll be playing till fucking three o'clock here. Klopp looks like he doesn't really know what to do. Looks a bit lost at the moment. Alisi coming on for Crystal Palace. I'm just looking on the United stand. Ricky's there. I think he's abroad. What are you doing, Ricky? He's definitely not in Manchester. He's got a parasol behind him. It's all right for some. Anyway, we'll be back and running here in a moment. Crystal Palace player coming off. Elise coming on. Liverpool need to up their game here. They need a bit of a kick up the arse. Otherwise, and this is the thing as well, you know, people say who's the favourites to win the league. Well, this is where I think Man City are still very, very much favourites because they will, they'll be, you know, for all the points that City have dropped, nobody's yet to open up a gap that doesn't prevent Man City coming back into it in the second half of the year. It'll be a crop at Christmas that is on. Arsenal are going to do it, says Captain Monopoly. Uh, Robbo says, as irritating as it is, we'd rather the refs bring it back rather than let the game go on when the ball's back in play like the Spurs game, says Robbo. Um, what Spurs game are you talking about? Liverpool will end up winning probably with a 95th minute headed corner, says Hessen. Well, they're losing, mate, and they've not had a shot on target yet. So if Liverpool are going to win, they've got to equalise first. Uh, Joe Gomez here. And uh, that goes wide. Of course, I think one of the big problems that uh, Liverpool has struggled with here is um, they've just not been they've not been able to get any flow going. Uh, United's eleven. I'm just going to give it you now for the game uh, today is uh, Onana, Delo, Regulon, Maguire, Shaw, Amrabat. McTominay, Fernandez, Ganacho, Anthony, Martial. No place for Rasmus. I'm not disappointed about that. I think I think Rasmus might be carrying a bit of an injury. Don't know whether he's on the bench. I'll uh, I'll let you know as soon as I've uh, seen the team from United's official account. But uh, apparently Rashford's on the bench, but Rasmus is. <sighs> Rasmus is on the bench as well with Rashford, uh, Varane, Wambasaka, Menu, Pelistri, Van der Beek, Hoyland, Rashford. Martial starts.
I, don't, I think it's a fitness thing. Uh, what's your opinion on Poch saying Chelsea were tired and have so many injuries and that's why they lost to United, says James? Well, I think there's a lot of people feel like that. Did Eddie Howe say that about losing to Everton? Uh, Arsenal fan here, happy if this finishes like this. Or a draw, says Kieran. I'm sure you are. Uh, don't forget, we'll be covering that game for you. Um, straight after the United match reaction, half past five. Arsenal against Villa on That's Football. Nunez, back post. No. No dice. Thanks everyone who's tuning in, by the way. Yes, we are going to be doing the Villa Arsenal game at half five. Please do subscribe. We're only 100 away from 71,000. Of course, uh, Liverpool are losing 1 0 here to Crystal Palace. RB Elliott's coming on. I know people say Liverpool will get back into this game, but I'm not going to say you're wrong. But to get back into the game, I think you've got to be playing well. And at the moment, they've had a very bad 70 minutes. Very bad. Another block. Allison's been Allison's been the busier goalkeeper. You know, Liverpool's attack has been has been as bad as inactive as uh, Anthony's right foot. Is it worse for United next week if Liverpool lose? Aram, uh, well, yeah, I know what you mean. If Liverpool lose, then. You know, they're going to be more pumped up to win their next game, which is obviously United. But uh, the Palace breaking away again here. The Palace score again. It's Chris Bull all over again, isn't it? On the break, good tackle. And that goes out for a, core, a throw in to Palace. I think, uh, Jamison, I'm going to go for a draw between Liverpool and, uh, sorry, between Villa and Arsenal. Double substitution here for Liverpool. Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott. Sir Bosley has not had a very good game. He's going to come off. Very, very quiet today. Not been able to, as, as I've said a few times, Liverpool's final third. Nunez coming off as well. Yeah, they've, they've, they've just very, very lacklustre Liverpool today. Very lacklustre. No shots on target. That's not been good enough. It's not. It's not been good enough from Liverpool and uh, Liverpool fans and Klopp will not need me to tell that to them. It's an opportunity, but I did say at half time and towards the end of the first half, it did have the feeling of the Luton game we watched a few weeks ago, where you expect Liverpool to win. And they really just were not that good. Um, and look, an another example of how competitive this league is. And as, as the Arsenal fan said there, what an opportunity for them. Oh, AU's off. Well, we say what an opportunity... He's sending AU off. And I, I, I didn't really see... I didn't really see a reason to do it unless it was dissent. Yeah, a second foul on Harvey Elliott. He didn't really seem to go for the yellow card. There seemed to be a bit of a delay in going for the yellow card. I think that's, that's the complaint from the Crystal Palace fans. What are your thoughts on that? Second yellow card. Again, I just think it's um, I just think it's how long that, that everything's just been seemed to have added added a delay today. But he's off. It is a red. Second yellow. You can't really argue about getting a yellow card for that second tackle. But he seems to have got away with it, first of all. Right, Liverpool are going to be attacking for 20 minutes. 
against 10 men. No, I agree with Josh. I think it is a second yellow. But again, look, I, I, I would say the same thing about everything. Was it a Palace penalty? Well, there's a foul there. Oh, Salah, 1-1. One, one. There you go. The game has changed on a sixpence. Liverpool see Palace go down to 10 men. And within a minute, it's 1-1. One, one. Arsenal fans will be sick. Man City fans, if you can find one, will be sick. But this game has changed in an instant. We didn't even get a chance to talk about it. 1-1, one, one, Salah with a bit of a deflection. Gakpo puts the cross into the back post. And uh, Curtis Jones, I don't think he'll get an assist for that because uh, it might go down as an OG. Deflects. Salah's shot deflects and uh, goes in the one place it couldn't go in. Uh, AU got sent off. And the goal's been given. It's 1-1. But look, I, 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 I'll look at this game and I say my biggest complaint has been the um, the delay on everything. So the penalty in the first half how long it took for them to overturn the penalty. The penalty in the second half, how long it took for them to actually review the penalty. And then the yellow card, the referee, uh, to me, seemed to take an age to give him a sec the second yellow. I think the decisions are correct, but I just think how long they've taken to get those decisions has been odd. But Liverpool now have got, what, 20 minutes without a time? 13 minutes of normal time. They'll be probably be about seven as well. You'd fancy Liverpool to win this now. And look, people will complain. People will moan. But how many times have I told you? Winning when you're playing badly is par for the course. If you can win... When you're not playing well, then you will do well when it comes to titles, title races, cups. And Liverpool for, well, right up into the red card. I don't think they had a shot on target for 70 minutes. And now they have. The score mark, fix it. Yes, sorry, I'm, I forgot I'm on manual here. Uh, Liverpool and Arsenal are playing two weeks today, Dan. We'll be doing a watch along for that. Don't you worry about it. It's a Christmas cracker. The 23rd, Saturday the 23rd, half past five, Anfield. Liverpool's next two games are Man United in the league again, uh, uh, next Sunday at Anfield and then the following Saturday, Arsenal. Jack says, City have got fans. I didn't know that. Hodgson has got a yellow, the madman. He's out here taking bodies, says Robbo96. Uh, thanks, everyone who's tuning in. Don't forget, we're back on here for Villa Arsenal at half five tonight. And I'm going to be on United stand in between for Man United against Bournemouth. Team news for United. Martial starts. Hoyland's on the bench. Rashford's on the bench. It's the same team as Sunday. Uh, Wednesday night. I just saw the yellow cards for AU. I mean, you'd be pissed off. They're both a bit soft. One of them, Van Dyke kicks the ball at him because he's not 10 yards away. And then the second one, they're soft. But I don't think you can necessarily argue with them. If it, if it happens against your team, you're over the moon. If it happens to your team, you're pissed off. Got Liverpool with their tails up here. Lovely play by Salah. But Palace tackle well. I think Palace have defended well. Uh, 
Ten minutes to go. Why didn't Canate get a yellow then? Well, he studs up. Inconsistency. Inconsistency. It'll be top of Christmas, that is all. I agree with Victor. He says kicking the ball away is a yellow, um, and the second tackle was a yellow. Soft is soft. As I say, I thought the penalty that Liverpool conceded was soft. You can't argue with it. Um, these things happen. But I think consistency is always going to be the problem. My my big problem with VAR today, and I've, I've laboured the point a lot, is just pure um, delays. It's, it's ridiculous how long it takes them to make decisions. But uh, other than that, the inconsistency I can't argue with is problematic but um i'll be very surprised if liverpool don't win this game now ass says gakpo will score echo says he's falling out of love with football can you do a poll for who will be top at christmas i will i'll be happy to do that for you well it won't be city Because City don't play on the game week before. So. I think you've got to. There's only three. I'll tell you what. I don't think they're getting anywhere near the credit they deserve. And we'll talk about it more at half five. But imagine. And I want Villa to win. Because I, want, I, I would love Villa to win the league. Because I don't want Liverpool to win the league as a United fan. I don't want City to win the league as a United fan. I don't want Arsenal to win the league as a United fan. Um, I'd probably prefer Arsenal to win it out of... Well, I would. I'd rather Arsenal win the league than Liverpool or City. But my ideal title, hold, title winner would be um, Villa. Now, imagine if Villa won tonight... I could definitely, uh, you know, I'd wear, I'd wear a Villa shirt if it meant they win the league. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be over the moon with Villa winning the league. The referee is an absolute disgrace. I'm not sure how much longer I can enjoy football when decisions like these are so consistently being made, says Inf. Um, another goalkeeping uh, delay here. Another injury delay, sorry. This game won't finish till three o'clock at this rate. I mean, the amount of delays. I mean, this is an injury, I know, but. Uh... Ref has been okay. It's the rules that are shocking, says Mr. Salty. And uh, do you think United will get top five in the Prem? If this goalkeeper plays on. Is a fake. It's got my boots on. It's what Palace do, apparently, says JC. It's Hugh Jackman, says Rian. Oh, you know. I know, I know this is just an injury and we can't do anything about it, but I fucking, it, it is, I don't know whether I'm the only one, but it's taking so much out, enjoyment out of football from when I used to grow up watching football. I've, I've never known so many delays. And again, footballers have stood around for three or four minutes after playing 85 minutes. And you wonder why they get muscle injuries. You can't do this. 
Somebody needs to actually make a stand and tell the Premier League, you can't keep doing this. You can't keep stopping the game every 10, 20 minutes for three or four minutes and have high-end athletes just walking around and then sprinting again. Like, they're going to get injured. This is actually an injury, though. Sam Johnston's coming off here. They're changing the goalkeeper. So this might play into Liverpool's hands. Goalkeeper for 10 minutes. Where's the elf marks, says Joel. Little shit's done something else now. He's in the, he's in the, he's in the living room. He's uh, basically cooked himself some toast. Cut four holes in it. Put two legs through in his first legs. And then done a sign saying I was feeling toasty. I'll give him, I'll give him, he's got, he's got banter, I'll give him that. Where's Dean Henderson? Uh, he is at Crystal Palace, but he's injured. So, McAllis, uh, Matthews is on here. So, Liverpool, 10 minutes against uh, 10 men and a reserve goalkeeper. If Bruno gets a yellow today, he can't play against Liverpool, says Cade. Thank you very much for that. I wasn't aware. I'm looking forward to the United game, actually. Um, if you've got nothing else to do uh, or you're a United fan, don't forget you can join me on United Stand straight after this for the Bournemouth game. Looking forward to it very much. Um, and then Villa Arsenal back on here. Very much looking forward to that as well. Gomez down the right-hand side. Trent's gone into the midfield. Gomez has done well there. Cuts the cross back. Keeper nearly fumbled it. And then Elliot shoots wide. The top is, the tock is ticking. The top, the clock is ticking. I nearly said the tock is clicking. Who scored for Liverpool? I think it went down as a Salah goal, Angelino. Pretty sure it did. Yeah, it's gone down as a Salah goal. No own goal. So, Curtis Jones might get you an assist. Do you think United will press the same with Martial, says the wheelbarrow? Well, it's going to be very interesting. It's a good point. You know, Rasmus is so good at it. I think Rasmus is on the bench because of uh, their managing an injury with him. And if he plays 90 minutes tonight, then you've got Bayern Munich on Thursday, on Tuesday. You've got Liverpool. I just think they're trying to man uh, manage it. He's on the bench, you know. Um, I can see the referee adding on a good 10 minutes here. Harvey Elliott, cross. Keeper comes and gets it. Give him some credit. They'll be trying to... Uh, they will be trying to give him a bit of uh, encouragement there, the Crystal Palace defenders. Hard to come on in a game like this. He'll be feeling a bit nervous. What's Diaz done all game, says Colin? See, I, I, I rate that Diaz for Liverpool, but he has um, he's nowhere near what he was like before the injury last season, is he? He's, got, he's had a lot on his plate, though. I mean, God, his dad got kidnapped, didn't he? Uh, Jones did get the assist, says obvious mistake. Thank you very much. Very stop start this game, literally. Uh, we're only 40 subscribers away from 71,000, by the way. So please do subscribe if you haven't before. You're very welcome on that, Football. Everybody's welcome here. Uh, our first of two watch-alongs today, we're doing Villa Arsenal, which is surely game of the weekend, if not game of the day. Although I do think Spurs Newcastle tomorrow will be a cracker, which we'll also do as a watch-along too. Um... Please subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. Liverpool probing here. We're about to find out how long will be added on. I think there could be as many as 10 minutes added on here. He needed to back heel that Gakpo. Here's Salah. Little touch, lovely ball. Diaz. Uh, was it Diaz? I don't, I don't know who that was. Might have been Curtis Jones, actually. Uh, who'll be top at Christmas? 52% of you have gone with Arsenal. 34% of you have gone with Liverpool. And uh, Villa have got 15%. That could change a lot if Villa were to win today. Uh, just on Villa. Um, goal! There it is. Harvey Elliott. Wasn't even looking. Um, that'll be That'll be it then. It's 
not. Well, I've just tweeted it there. Liverpool winning when playing badly is not a good thing. And I think my prediction that they'll be top at Christmas may well be correct. Ten minutes of added time as well. Roy Hodgson just sat down there. Um... That's a good finish by Harvey Elliott, to be fair. Salah gets the assist as well. I mean, I say it's an assist. He just passed him the ball. Harvey Elliott's shot from outside the box. Um, Arsenal play Brighton next Sunday. Liverpool play Manchester United. Aston Villa at Brentford. And then the weekend before Christmas, Liverpool, Arsenal and uh, Villa are playing Sheffield United. So if Villa were to win tonight, they would go a point behind Arsenal. Yeah, it's, probably, it's going to be Liverpool or Arsenal top at Christmas, I think. I don't see a way back for Palace now. I really don't. Ten men. It was going so well for Palace at, with ten men. L L I think at that point, Liverpool hadn't had a shot on goal. And I, I said, this reminds me of the Luton game where they're really just not in the game. They weren't playing very well at all. AU gets sent off for the second yellow card. Within a minute, Liverpool are level. And then chances galore against 10 men. So it's... The game... This is this is the great thing about football, isn't it? It can change on a sixpence. And it certainly has today. Um, I mean, Palace are not going to get back into this game with 10 men. They're just not going to do it. But with 11 people on the pitch and 1-0, I don't know whether Liverpool go on and win this game. Uh, Liverpool just pinging the ball about now. Yeah, Bruno Fernandes is a booking away from missing Anfield next week. A lot of United fans worried about Martial starting. I think it comes down to fitness, if I'm being honest. Offside, Liverpool nearly scoring again with Diaz, but he's offside. Harvey Elliott. Yeah, he's gone. He's offside there. But he's had his, he's made his impact, Harvey Elliott. Off the bench, he had a little bit of a hug and a bit of encouragement from Klopp before he did come on. And uh, he's certainly made a difference here. Uh, if you've got Mo Salah in your fancy Premier League side, by the way, I have, um, he will have you 10 points. That soft red could cost Roy Hodgson his job, says Anne. And in Liverpool style, we will all we, we will give you a goal and come back and win always, says Clayden. I think you needed the red card today, mate. Uh, let's remember Liverpool have only won because they're against 10 men and they injured the Palace goalkeeper. Absolute scam results, says Jack. And that soft red could have done that from Anne. Thank you very much, Anne. Um, they are still checking the offside here, which is incredible. Again, I mean, I think that this referee and the VAR would love to play till Sunday. It's it's incredible how long they've played on. Still not started playing again. Do, 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 do. Well, I'm hoping that the Villa game's better than this because this has been a struggle at times to watch. Ridiculously stop start. Fix the score, Mark. Sorry, why has nobody told me to fix the score before now? We've had it, we've had it like this for ages. There we go. 
we go. 2 1. Mark's hating this, says Bowser. Well, you know me, I'm actually quite pragmatic and unbiased on that football. Um, I am. Um, but I'm never going to pretend that I like Liverpool winning because that would, I think, I think even Liverpool fans would respect that. The, the rivalry between Man United and Liverpool is the real rivalry. I don't want Liverpool to win the league. Of course I don't. Um, I don't have a massive problem with the officiating today in relation to the decisions have been made. I've just got, I've got a massive problem with how long they've taken to make them. As a spectacle, I think we could have all been having a bowl of soup now waiting for the United game because th this game should be over. The fact that we're still playing this game at 26 minutes past two is incredible. Um, I think that's the surprising thing to me. But uh, other than that, um, I don't have a huge problem with it. Some soft decisions. I don't think it should have been a penalty to Palace. I thought it was a bit soft. I don't think... AU should have got a second yellow. I think it was a bit soft, so that's balanced itself out. I think they got the decision right on the penalty in the first half, but how long it took for them to do that was um, incredible. Uh, Gomez has been immense, says Bear. But Liverpool, look, I said this before, with Arsenal um, against Luton, winning when it's not going right is how you stay in a title race and i guarantee you pep guardiola would have watched this game today or if he hasn't watched it he would think this you know with 20 minutes to go liverpool don't look like they're going to get a draw one nil down they don't look like they're going to get a draw au gets sent off and then it's 2-1 and people can say oh palace have been unlucky well in a sense they have but they're not it's not the first time in football that's happened that's happened where a team that's in a title race plays badly and finds a way of winning. I'm straight on to um, United Stand after this. I'm just going to quickly run out and go to the toilet. And then we'll be live on the United Stand. So, uh, yes. United against Bournemouth. And then back here for Arsenal Villa. Which is already set up as well. Uh, hopefully this result might make Palace sit up and make some decisions behind the scenes fast. Most fans would agree they've stagnated and showing lack of ambition right now, says Robbo. Well, I predicted before the season started that Hodgson would be the first sacking and everyone said, you don't know what you're on about. And I know he's not going to be the first sacking, but um, I do know what I was on about. I think Hodgson has had a great career, but shouldn't be managing in the Premier League now. He should be enjoying his retirement. And, and, and you know, Palace... Palace are just a bit of a meh team, aren't they? Um, betting on a dodgy VAR decision for Arsenal tonight, says CL. I hope not. I hope not. Um, I guarantee that if the team doesn't play the same, everyone will blame Martial for the team being tired and forget we played a midweek game, says Raven. We'll see, we'll see. Joe Gomez has just been booked there. What do you want for Christmas, Mark, says Jack. I don't, I, I don't really want anything, really. A bit of a break with the family and stuff would be nice. <laughs> um, boy, he's very angry, says John. Can Palace create anything here in what looks like it's going to be the last minute? Wins a win, says Vichel. Referee's booking someone else here. Very, very frustrating if you're a Palace fan, I'm sure. Luis Diaz has uh, just been uh, booked there as well. Free kick for Palace. This could be it, really. We're just about to hit 100 minutes. 100 minutes. And we had 15 minutes have been, at, 15 minutes have been added onto this game altogether. Five in the first half. 10 in the second half. You're adding 15 minutes onto, onto games. They've got it. Oh, Alisson saved it. I couldn't see it. Big chance for Palace. Corner. He knows it. Anderson. Well, they should have scored that. I think Palace can uh, look at themselves there and say, for all their bad luck, he might have been offside in the build-up anyway. But he should have scored. He should have scored that. What the, what's he what's he doing now? They're looking for a penalty, are they? No. No, they're 
Never a penalty, that. Corner comes in. Headed wide. Another corner. Another corner for Palace. 101 minutes. No, they wouldn't be checking for offside, Rock, because the goal didn't go in. And what? It's not going to be a penalty. He's already said play on. Palace with the corner. Added away. Salah. Palace still got it. Going to break away with Harvey Elliott. Oh, what, what, what are we doing here? Another free kick. Oh my god. He's still giving. Mate, I'm I'm gone. Right, I'm gonna go over to the United Stand. This ref's a complete dickhead. Um good result for Liverpool. The ref's a dick. I mean, he's just booking everybody. He just doesn't want to go home. He's obviously not got much of a home life. He just wants to carry on. I'll see you on the United Stand.